Hallelujah! Praise your Almighty God. We come to you with our hearts. All the praise, worship, and adoration to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We just want to worship you in spirit and in truth. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We thank you for your presence amongst your people today.
wish the time to worship. Oh, now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to. glad we are in the house of God Amen. in his presence Amen. Amen.
sense your presence this morning. Continue to help us worship you in spirit. We want to enter in your presence like never before. Make our experience with you today very real. So real. Go we'll change this.
never leave you. All the time. Our strength, our power, our thought, our provision, our soul. of our hearts King of God Holy One our hearts first seems wish now and sings my soul my sin Oh, glory, free. 
together. Yes, Lord. sound of victory. Hallelujah. Raise your voices. Saints. Praise God. Hallelujah. What a mighty God you serve. Yes. Are you happy today? Yes. yes, there's joy in the house of the Lord. There's power in the house of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, there is victory in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. No matter what the circumstances are, in the name of Jesus, there is victory in the house of the Lord. Last night was wonderful. We had a wonderful time of worship in this place. It was good to see different pastors come together and worship the Lord. It's really good. Okay. Today, the Lord put in my heart to speak about why do people follow Jesus? Why do people follow Jesus? Uh, Juliana and Brianna, if you are, can you all write this down on the screen? Put up on the screen, write it down. Can someone, can, can you just shout out? Why do people, why do you think people follow Jesus? I'm talking of basic, basic things people follow Jesus for. What, why do why does people follow Jesus? Truth. truth. Can I say truth? Can I write truth there? Yeah. Say why do people follow Jesus? It's a caption. Think of things and tell me when you... Is it possible to do it or...? Uh, great, great, why do... Well done, give, give a hand to the girls. Very, very good. Okay, underneath that, underneath that put truth, Salvation, love, hope, Truth, salvation, health. No, truth, salvation, love, hope, health. Who did he? 
Did, did you want to say health? We said health. Health. Ah, okay, health. Okay, health. <laughs> right. Any, anything else? I can't hear you. Joy. Purpose. Anything else? Desperation. <laughs> Desperation. What did Bruce say? Understanding. Understanding. Destiny. Destiny. Write on a piece of paper and then you can write it up on the screen. Suddenly the whole lot will appear on the screen. <laughs> what? Because he is God. Because he is the only way. Because he is the only way. He's a peace, yeah. Power, for power. I think you're, you're saying all the holy things. <laughs> I want you to just think out of the box. Why do people follow Jesus in the world? Why would they follow Jesus? Just an earthly thought, you're saying. Yeah, yeah. General thinking. Outside the church, in the church. Curious. No other man in the history of the world died for humanity. That's a paragraph. (laughs) 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 Okay, what else? Okay. There are so many reasons people follow Jesus. You see, miracles is nothing they follow Jesus for. But the whole thing. Yes, yes, Elizabeth, you heard something? Yes. Uh, he leads us to the Father, and we can know that God is God. And I think this is very important. Yes. How can you cut it short into a few words? Okay. <laughs> Look at all of this. They are great. Everything is excellent there. But one word sticks out for me out of the whole lot. Why should you follow Jesus? Because of L O V E, love. Because of love. Now, in the Bible, the Pharisees. Followed Jesus to try and trap him because they didn't like Jesus. They constantly set traps for Jesus, try to catch him and make him put him, make him, make a mockery of him. Let's turn to Luke chapter seven. Verse 36 to 50. Of course, you can read it. Yeah. Luke chapter 7, verse 36 to 50. Luke chapter 7, verse 36 to 50. When one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him, he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. A woman in that town who lived a sinful life learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house. So she came there with an alabaster jar of perfume. As she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. 
When she wiped them with her hair, kissed them and poured perfume on them. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who is touching him and what kind of woman she is, that she is a sinner. Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two people owned money to a certain money lender. One owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back. So he forgave the debts of both. Now which of them would love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt forgiven. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. Then he turned toward the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any of water for my feet. But she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss. But this woman, from the time I entered, has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not even put oil on my head, but she poured perfume on my feet. Therefore I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, as her great love has shown. And whoever has been forgiven little, loves a little. Then Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. The other guests began to say amongst themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? Jesus said to the woman, your faith saved you. Go in peace. Amen. What a beautiful story. Put this story in today's scenario. Say, I'm with, they're just using this as illustration. Say, I'm with all the pastors in the city of Casey. And they invited us to come and seated there. And a known prostitute in the area comes. And she starts kissing my feet and she's crying on my feet. What do you think the pastors will say? You see the way the things, how man thinks and how God, Jesus thinks. Last time, last week before last, I preached on God's mind. The Pharisees invited Jesus, not with a good motive, I believe they want to trap Jesus. Now when he came, Jesus came and reclined and he was with them talking. In the Middle Eastern culture, reclining is generally, my understanding is, couches on the floor, cushions on the floor, you sort of sit like. You know, so here are all the families seated here. The city is square. And then they have things they drink, tea and all that they drink. So, uh, Jesus is reclining with the other Pharisees, just relaxing. Prostitute walks in. Now the Pharisees are talking, I'm sure they're talking. Let's see what he does with this woman. Now, women in leadership is banned. Even now in some, most of the Middle East is banned. So, it, it, it's considered, what can I say, it's a very, um, the right word to use. Yeah, taboo, yeah. It's, it's not accepted in society for women to be in leadership. They're supposed to be in the kitchen and the cooking and all of that stuff. So, but this woman is a prostitute. She comes, she sees Jesus, and she's filled with conviction. Her heart will be filled with conviction, thinking, oh, when Jesus appeared, you know, when you come to Jesus, what happens is in our hearts, there's something wrong. Conviction falls in our heart. This woman, tears start streaming down her cheek. Because her sins bring a, bring a conviction. So, without checking with anyone, she goes straight to Jesus. Because she knew what the Pharisees will say. 
And, it's, and she's kissing the feet of Jesus. Pharisees thought, my goodness, this, this guy just, we got him today. Pharisees thought, we can mock, mock him and shame him today. So when Jesus was relaxed, she started kissing his feet and with her tears for washing his feet. Then she takes an alabaster jar of oil and she pours it on his feet. And then she takes her hair and she wipes, it, she wipes his feet. Now, the Pharisees were evil. Their hearts it was. Their minds were constantly wanting to put Jesus down. They thought it's the ideal situation to catch Jesus, but Jesus used wisdom. He said, Simon, if a person knowing what they were thinking, if a person Well, what does he say? If a person was that's more dead, that's yeah. And he, he brings a beautiful illustration. At that, the Pharisees say, "Mouth shut." I love the way Jesus handled the situation. He didn't jump and arrogantly shout or anything. Very calmly, he brings the illustration. You know, when the when a prostitute was brought to Jesus. Everybody understand, it's saying, stone him, stone, stone the woman, stone the woman, kill her. They were taking the stones ready to stone her. Jesus didn't say anything. He wrote on the ground. He, he who has no sin cast the first stone. Wow, beautiful, isn't it? And this, they could, they could, they, they had no words. We are coming into a season where the world, not only the world, the Pharisees and the Sadducees were leaders in the, the what do you call synagogue. When people in the world try your best to pull you down, trap you, and crucify you, we got to use wisdom. So, how do we get wisdom from the Lord? By once coming to church one sun, or Sunday on Sunday, or is it should be a lifestyle. I pray, I plead with you, please spend time in prayer because the times ahead of us are going to be very hard. I've been mean, preaching these messages in so many different ways over and over again that people will try everything to try and pull you down. I remember when my court case started off with the Islamic Council of Victoria. I was called in by the hierarchy of the denomination, then which I belong to. When I went into the meeting, there was 13 Pharisees seated there. Sorry, so so, so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, forgive me. <laughs> hmm. Thirteen of them, they're all heavyweight champions in the denomination. Eleven pastors and two lawyers. See, I was innocent. I didn't know anything. I just went with myself and one or one other one or one more person went with me. When I went to the when I went there and the boardroom opened, I saw thirteen people seated there. It really shocked me, but I was calm and they started questioning me. 
They are questioning me as if though I have done something criminal offence. Whereas I was only fighting for the truth. To preach the word of God and not to be stopped. They started questioning me, question me, question me for, I don't know, for one hour maybe, one and a half hours. Thank God he gave me all the answers. I gave every question I gave, I gave an answer. Ultimately, I was sitting so tired of questioning, I got up from my seat and I told them, I said, Men of God, if you love Jesus, you stand for the truth. Amen. If you don't love Jesus, you'll compromise. To maintain the position in the society, I said, I'm not ready to compromise, I'm going to speak the truth. The truth set the people free. If you want to take my credentials from me, here you can have it. If that's the meeting, if that's what you call this meeting for. And this time I didn't know something very secretive was happening in the background, which I didn't know. The denominational leader was a good friend of the Islamic Council's president. The Islamic Council's president has met with him. Someone inside, inside, you know, what do you call the paper that fell off the truck? Inside information came out and I got to know. And I didn't know anything about this. Even the leader of the denomination was at the Islamic Council President's son's wedding. That's how close they were. And he has told, the Islamic Council President has told the denomination leader to rein me in and to tell me to stop fighting the case. I didn't do anything. I was innocent. I just went, simply went there and I, these wolves were, I called them wolves, but they were wolves. They were questioning from every side. And I said, I know Islam. I lived in Saudi Arabia. Have any of you lived in Saudi Arabia? Have any of you read the Quran? I said, you want to be nice to everyone, but at times you have to take a stand and be truthful. And I said, I'm sorry. I mean, if you're telling me to apologize, because they told me to apologize. They told me just apologize and we, we, we can't be seen to be arrogant Christians, they told me. You just apologize and then it will be calm. I said, sorry, I will not apologize. I'm going to take my credentials, take my credentials. That's it. They could not stop me. So the, the leader came to me and put his arms around my shoulder and said, Danny, you're a good guy. We can work together. I, I couldn't work together with them, unfortunately, but they took my credentials off me. So in every way, you'd be attacked. But you should still stand for Jesus, the truth will set us free. I had two officers from the tax department come some years ago to my office. <coughs> Sorry, not COVID. Do <laughs> 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 the PCR test? What madness. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So the Pharisees try to capture catch Jesus. Uh, yeah. Two tax officers came to my office and said, Mr. Nalaya, if you want charity status, if you want to be tax exempt, because we were charity, we were registered charity, we were tax exempt, you can't preach from the pulpit when you're speaking, you can't say anything controversial. You can't mention political 
alignment or anything with anyone. Your tax status, tax status will be removed from you. I looked at two officers and I said, there's a gentleman and a lady. Okay. Thank you very much for coming. Appreciate your advice. I can't have a monkey hanging on my back when I preach. I want to be free to preach. So I will not stop speaking the way I'm speaking. I'll continue to speak the way I'm speaking. If you want to take the tax status off, take it off. So they deregister us from charity status and we don't get tax exemption now. But I must say this. From that day to today, we've had more people blessing us with finances than before that. See, the Lord looks at the heart. We look at the outcome situation. Don't worry about the outcome of the situation. Based, let the outcome work itself out. But you do what's right in the sight of God. And when you are right in the sight of God, when you are doing it with the right motive, even if you do mistakes, have mistakes, the Lord will still bless you. Amen. I'm going to share a testimony with you. Uh, should I share this? On uh, Friday, Friday, which I shared. Mm, yeah, I'll tell you. <laughs> See, my mother is 90 years old. She turned 90 in June. We wanted to go there, but we couldn't go there because of certain situations. But my mother is, every time she calls me, she speaks to me, she says, Danny, are you coming to see me? I don't know how long I live. So, I also want to go and see her, but finances were tight for us to go on a trip, for three of us to go. So we prayed, and then we, we planned on our tickets to go to Sri Lanka. It was going to cost us, the cost of going, the three of us and coming back, is $5,500. So we, I was wondering how are we going to find the money to go. See, when your heart is honest and heart is truthful, no need for anyone else knowing the problem. Even. I didn't tell anyone about it. I got an email from a lady and a text message followed. She's a lady living in South Australia, whom I've known for a long time. She said, Pastor, I feel led to sow into your life and your family's life $5,000. She sent me a text message. Please go on a holiday. Now this lady just don't know anything. I've not met spoken of her, spoken to her for years. We, the money came in for the tickets. We were able to buy the tickets and we were going on the 29th of December to the 15th of January to Sri Lanka to see my mother and my wife's mother. Can I give the Lord a clap offering? Yeah. Then a, another person called me and said, from Perth, He's a, he was a pastor before. Said, Myself and my wife are coming to Melbourne on work. Can we come to your house for dinner? But we will buy the dinner. We'll come to your house and buy the dinner. That sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> I said Chinese. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, they came. That morning, the day they came, I had a word given to me from the Lord regarding this brother. So when he, they came, I gave the word to him and his wife. They were so touched, he was in tears. He said, I so need it. I'm going to record this word, I'm going to record this word. 
I have to play this to myself to remind me of what the Lord has said. Anyway, just before leaving, he gives us a, gives me an envelope. Pastor, this is a blessing for you and your family. So after they left, we opened the envelope. It was $500. 5,500 to get money covered. See. The Lord, you know, when you write to the Lord, even when you go, you don't need to tell to anyone any problem. You pray and commit it to the Lord and just thank the Lord. Man, I feel like crying. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Heaven, the Lord has blessed us as a nation. <coughs> we are so blessed as a nation. Do you know that we are very privileged to live in Australia? Do you think of it even at times? I mean, there were times in Sri Lanka when we used to drive my car and my son will be small and he'll say, Dad, we have not had grapes for a long time. Can you buy some grapes? No money to buy grapes. So I had to change the topic and bypass the shop, the grape shop. He remembers every, I say, he has a brain like an elephant. Every time he sees the shop, he remembers and he has our grapes. Now we get grapes free, courtesy of Pastor Ben. My sister Desa and Aldi. <laughs> we are so blessed. <laughs> I mean, she's, she's, she's amazing. We are a blessed people to live in Australia. Don't grumble. Now, next week I'm sending an email with our sight words. Sight works was delayed because of rain. But I'm going to tell Ashwin to write this email tomorrow. Due to blessed weather, the sight works were delayed. Not bad weather. Blessed weather. Because we are blessed. Rain is a blessing. I mean, praise God. So, this woman, the Pharisees, tried to trap Jesus. But the woman's heart was pure. She wept at the feet of Jesus. The Pharisees possibly trying to trap Jesus because they did not like him. Because he always wanted to do the will of the Father. But the woman was genuinely in love with Jesus and wanted to get her life sorted out. Is that wonderful? The woman was genuinely in love, genuinely in love with Jesus. She wanted to get her life sorted out. By, by letting the woman minister to him, he was breaking the mindset of the religious system who did not believe that women can minister. Mm. Yes. Can someone read Matthew 16, 24? Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Matthew 16, 24. Yeah. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Amen. So if you follow Jesus, there are so many reasons people follow Jesus. But if you it, it is a price to be paid. 
there's a cost in following Jesus. Says, deny everything, take up the cross and follow me. At times I feel the pressures of the world comes pressing. But I take up the cross and I say, I'll never stop following Jesus. I'll follow him till my dying day. Amen. The enemies constantly want to trap you, pull you down. Seek God for divine wisdom so that the enemy will be defeated and put to shame. Serve Jesus with a clean heart, pure and clean heart. Even if it seems you have stepped out of place, you will still bring glory to God. Luke 7, 44 and 47. Yvonne, can you turn to John chapter 12, verse 1 to 8? 44 to 47. Luke 7, 44 to 47. Then he turned toward the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, and this woman, from the time I entered, has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, as her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven, little loves little. Amen. Jesus, Jesus destroyed the religious system and brought back justice and righteousness. Jesus destroyed the religious system and brought back justice and righteousness. The time is right now for us to rise up in justice and righteousness and destroy the religious mindset. The religion says, don't do. Jesus says, do it. When the religion says, do it, Jesus says, don't do it. John, you want to read chapter, John chapter 12. One to seven? One to eight. One to eight. Chapter 12. Why? Hi, uh, John chapter 12, 1 to 8. Six days before the Passover, Jesus went to Bethany, where Lazarus was, whom he had raised from the dead. So they gave a supper for him there. Martha was serving, and Lazarus was one of those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took a pound of very expensive perfume, of pure nard, and she poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was going to betray him, said, Why was the, this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? Now he said this not because he cared about the poor, for he had never cared about them, but because he was a thief, and since he had the money box, serving as treasurer for the twelve disciples, he used to pilfer what was put into it. So Jesus said, Let her alone, so that she may keep the rest of it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. In the Amplified Version. Amen. Amen. So that's another, another incident when Jesus went to Martha and Mary, Lazarus' house. But we, we have been to the place where the house of Martha, Mary and Lazarus was in Israel. How many of you remember going there? Yep. Rosie, you went there? Oh, yeah. No, no. Yeah, well, something beautiful happened when you were there. And the Patricia can remember this. We went in, 
And it's a church, it's an Orthodox church built in the place with houses. The tomb of Lazarus was a few meters away from the house. We went in there and the priest was there. I told the priest, we want to worship God. Can we worship him? I spoke to him like a religious person because he was an Orthodox priest. I didn't talk about Holy Ghost, fill fire and all that, but I just said, he said yes. So I went and I went to the altar and I started. We had 60 people in our team. And I started singing, He's Lord. The best version of He's Lord was sung that day because 60 people are singing, but I heard, could I heard literally thousands joining us in song. In that place, there were angels waiting for an opportunity to praise Jesus. So we sang, He's Lord, and worshiped the Lord. And man, just beautiful. We, we, Patricia, can you remember this? Yeah, you can remember. Yeah, first trip. So we heard the voice of thousands of others singing with us. And when we finished singing, we prayed in tongues. We prayed in tongues, and the priest got jittery. He ran away from the church, and I knew I had two, three minutes, because he was going to the tomb, not to bring Lazarus, but to bring out our guide. <coughs> he brought out our guide, and he came. So I said to her, to the guide comes to the priest, they're coming now to talk to me. I said, thank you everyone, let's take a love offer again, bless the priest. <laughs> Man, he came, he came very aggressively, he came, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> and he, was, so he took a love offer again, he blessed the church. <laughs> That's what happened when we went to Lazarus' house. But when Jesus went there, Mary, What was the perfume she used? What was the perfume? None. None. Very expensive perfume. And he, she, she washed Jesus' feet. Now Judas tries to be Mr. Holy, but he was very cunning. He always used to take money from the treasury. He says, why should you waste so much money she can sell it and give it to the poor? Jesus said, the poor you'll always have. But this woman has done something good. Keep the rest of it for, the, for, my, for my burial. What an amazing journey Jesus walked. 33 years, three years in ministry. He impacted the whole world. Let's use wisdom and do what God wants us to do. No matter, in the natural, it may seem popular to do the thing, but don't do it because it's popular. Do it because God wants you to do it, and you will be blessed. God bless you. Give thanks with a grateful Amen. Yeah.